hymnal, page number 354, as we stand together. Choir will come down on the last verse, 354, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a our youth choir. You're going to worship together with the youth choir. I want to start out by giving the good news about Pastor Larry Raines, evangelist. Brother Larry Raines, they, they uh, did the CT scan and the diagnosis was not a stroke. They looked like all the indications looked like it was. And there's another, I, I left my phone in the study, but uh, there's a long word about some temporary memory loss and confusion. Very, very rare, but they believe in that's what it was. And they are doing some more MRI and further testing. But so far, no stroke is the diagnosis we heard just a little while ago. So we sure thank the Lord for that. And, and uh, continue, please, to pray for that family. They're all in Knoxville, Tennessee. All right, this is our youth choir. We did have uh, a few texts about it raining, storming so bad, about people not being able to make it. But we're glad all of you are here. So we're a little down tonight number-wise. But nonetheless, they'll do their best while they say all right.
said the Lord's good, amen. By the way, he's good uh, whether it's raining or sunshine. He's good whether it's sickness and health. He's good in poverty and wealth, amen. He's good to the, he's good to the unsaved and he's good to the saved. Praise God for that. We welcome you. We're glad you're here, each and every one of you. Thank you for braving the weather. I, right when I, before I came to church, there was tornado warnings or watches or whatever, and so I uh, said take shelter, so I was already here, so I was in my shelter, amen, and I'm glad that I, as far as no hadn't came, I don't know what's happening out there, but we're glad you braved the weather and came on to church tonight. Quickly, let me go over a few things. Thank you, young people. Uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday, October 11th, from 2 to 6.30, the uh, American Red Cross will have the, the mobile unit behind the church here for a blood drive. And, and I can tell you that if all of us wait till I uh, ain't no us about it, if y'all, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I got any to spare. I don't know if I do or not. Maybe I do. But anyway, uh, everybody can't wait to six when you come to supper because then you'll be in line all day. So I don't know how you're going to work that, but whoever wants to, you know, it's from 2 to 630 the blood drive around the back, all right? So keep that in mind. Then also this Wednesday, our brother missionary friend to Philippines will be here to preach for us for Wednesday night service. That starts at 7.30. And you visitors, you're welcome to come to the meal from 6 to 7, okay? Then Friday, October 20th is the church's fall festival on the ball field. So that starts at 6 p.m. Keep that in mind. And this Saturday, weather permitting. So we'll maybe do an all call if it changes, which now it's subject to change. The, uh, the Young Marriage Sunday School class fall festival is Saturday at 6 p.m. And again, if the weather permits, then they'll go ahead with that. If not, they'll reschedule. But we'll let everybody know as the day approaches. But anyway, Saturday at 6 p.m., keep that in mind. Let's have the ushers come on in. We'll get the regular tithe and offering. Appreciate our visitors being here. I hope the Lord will bless you for being in Mountain View Baptist Church tonight. All right, I really do. May God bless you. Ushers are coming ahead. You notice that uh, Brother John Cudd, and thank you, Brother John, has got an organized uh, door uh, security going on right now, and that's alternating the men. We appreciate him doing that. We're meeting with some security people. As soon as they give us the date where well, we can sit down and get everybody together, that's when it's really going to be organized as far as who's going to be on the security team and all that kind of stuff. So we'll make it real safe around here at Mountain View Baptist Church, all right? God bless you as she play, or he, he, he plays. He plays, and uh, God bless you while the ushers serve you. Go ahead. Ty, how about stepping up here and pray for us, dedicating the offering, and let's, let's uh, continue, please, to pray for Pastor Larry Rains. Um, the you know, preliminary diagnosis is no stroke, but doing more tests, and I think they're keeping him in the hospital, too. Let's pray for him, all right? Lord, Ty, if you will. Lord, we love you tonight. God, we thank you for this place to come to. God, to worship you, Lord, we thank you for the great service we had this morning. God, thank you for speaking to us through our pastor, Lord. Thank you for blessing him and touching him there. And God, I pray for Brother Rains, Lord, and the entire family there. God, would you please touch him and help him. And God, would you please lift him up. And God, help the family, Lord, just touch them there. And yes. God, we thank you for saving us. God, we thank you for this place. 
Yes. God, we thank yes. for the help, Lord, to get up this morning and come right. here and tonight, Lord, to come back. God, we just praise you for that, Lord. Lord. We don't want to take for granted, Lord, what you've given us every day, day by day. And God, we love you. We thank you. Praise you for all your goodness. Please bless the tithes and offers. And God, I pray, Lord, you'd touch them, help them, and help the giver, Lord. I thank you for blessing us as we give to you, Lord. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We've got uh, two or three groups up here. They're going to sing for us and trust that there'll be a blessing to you. And you worship God together while the uh, singers come. All right. God bless you. Brother Cam, stand up real quick. Where'd you go, Brother Cam? You behind me? Give us that youth choir date one more time, the one we're going to go ahead with. No, November 3rd. That's on uh, what night? Uh, Monday night. Monday night. And, uh, and um, let's see, where, what city is that? Shelby, yeah, Shelby, Brother Bo Wagner's church. Now, just schedule that. November 13th, we'll be getting in the bulletin in the next few weeks, but I want you to go ahead and write it down, okay? November 13th, and uh, that we're scheduled to be there for a revival that night, all right? All right, you're working with them while they sing. Sinking low, I had tripped and fallen. I had missed the goal. Condemnation threatened. I cried out in fear. Mercy said, Forgiven, won't you come up? On the mountain top, just think of it, the Lord, the King, the Creator of everything, loves me with the love that won't stop. If you bear the burden. Since our life, past mistakes and failures haunt you in the night. You can be forgiven, for God's word is true. On the wings of eagles, you can see. He lifted me way up high, set my feet upon the mountain top. Just think of it, the Lord, the King, the Creator of everything, loves me with the love that won't stop. I love the Lord, He heard my cry. He lifted me way up high, set my feet upon the mountain top. Just think of it, the Lord, the King, the Creator of everything, loves me with the love that won't stop. the song, all right, young uh, men's trio, and while they're coming, uh, congratulate Jonathan and Victoria, uh, found out, I guess, yesterday or sometime this week, of course, found out about the baby, but now they found out it's going to be a little girl, so we congratulate you on uh, the on oncoming of a little girl, God bless you all, all right, y'all ready, worship with them, all this thing. Well, I was just an old beggar In sin's halls I wandered So far, far away from the fold But then an old-fashioned preacher Told me about Jesus And now I belong to Him 
and I know. I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I know, I know that I've been born again. Well, I know. I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. This mark the Lord gave me, I know I'm a child of the King. Well, I've traded my racks for a home over yonder. I've given my all to my Lord. That day the Lord saved me. He put a blood mark upon me. And now I am one of His own. Oh, and I know. I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I know that I've been born again. Exodus 20 here, I want us to kind of take a fresh look at it, all right? And we're not going to be long tonight, the Lord willing any, anyway, but uh, I do want us to take a fresh look at this Exodus chapter 20. It's important, and uh, we're not going to re-preach what we preached this morning. Uh, there's no sense in that, but I want to come to you with something entirely uh, fresh and new tonight. Exodus 20, please. If you have your Bibles, I want you to look in verse 1, and, the, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's a commandment. Verse four, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Verse 7, thou shalt not, listen to this, take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Verse number 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Look at verse 12, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Verse 13, thou shalt not kill. Verse 14, thou shalt not commit adultery. Verse 15, thou shalt not steal. Verse 16, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And then conclusively, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house 
Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. The Ten Commandments. Somebody said again that our society, Brother Spencer, thinks that the Ten Commandments are like cornflakes. They're familiar, they're old, and they're not very exciting. But I want to say to you tonight, that is not true. It is the Word of God for our day and for our hour. Now, many, many people, many people that I've tried to read after Brother David believe that the commandments are grouped in four and in six. The first four is our duty towards God. Brother Mayo, the, the latter six is our duty to our fellow man. There are others, and I'm leaning this way, that group it five and five. And I'll show you why, and it's very interesting, all right? Five and five, because the fifth one being honor thy father and thy mother, as the parents are God's representatives on earth, would that not tend to make us believe, Brother Randy, that that also comes under the category of our duty or our responsibility towards God? Can I get an amen? Now, to prove this, I want you to take your Bible and go to Matthew 22. Everybody take your Bible and go to Matthew 22. Very interesting right here. And we're going to get back to Exodus 20 in just a moment. Matthew chapter 22. And I want you to look in verse number 35. Watch this. Verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Watch this. This is the first and great commandment. You know you could honestly put the commandment one through four right there and also, Brother Randy, maybe even one through five. Well, watch the next phrase. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, on those two commandments, Brother Trey, are summed up the entirety of the commandments of the Old Testament. When I love the Lord my God with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my might, I'll not have no other gods before me. If I love the Lord my God, Brother Kyle, I'll not make any graven image. Somebody help me. If I love the Lord my God, I'll not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. If I love the Lord my God, I'll remember the, sin, the Lord's day. Amen. And if I love the Lord my God, I'll honor my mother, mother, and father who are God's representative of authority on earth. But then, the second one is like unto the first, Brother Gary. Love thy neighbor as thy and if I love my neighbor, I will not kill, say amen. I will not commit adultery. I will not steal. I will not bear false witness. And I will not covet. It's, it's, it's remarkable to me how, brother, being the Lord himself, divided the commandments in two distinct groups. And they said these commandments are summarized and they hang all the law and all the prophets. Now go back to Exodus chapter 20, all right? And so what I'm simply trying to tell you is there's nothing wrong with looking at it as a duty towards God and our duty towards our fellow mankind. The first four or the first five, our responsibility towards God and the second five, our responsibility towards our fellow man. This is interesting. I hope it will be interesting to you. In the first four, commandments. Watch this now with the harvester. He deals with our thoughts. He deals with our words. And he deals with our deeds. Alright? I said in the first four commandments he deals with our thoughts. He deals with our words. Do not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And he deals with our deeds. But in the second group of commandments, Brother Stewart, he reverses all that and he deals with our deeds. He deals with our words. Don't bear false witness. 
and then he deals with our thoughts. Do not covet. I'm simply trying to tell you tonight a fresh look at the Ten Commandments. And I'm glad tonight, Brother Pitt, that God has a word to say about my thought life. Say amen. And God has a word to say about the words that come out of my mouth. And God also has a word to say about the deeds of my life. And then as it becomes my relationship and my responsibility with my fellow humanity, the Lord has a word to say about my deeds. He has a word to say about my words. And thank God he has a word to say about my thoughts. All right? Did you know covetousness? Watch this, all right? I'll just put this in right here. Thou shalt not covet. Covet, you can't do that outwardly. Say amen. You don't do that outwardly. That's in your mind. That's in your spirit. Am I right about it, church? That's in your, that's in your inner man. You covet, you long, you lust, you want something that's not yours. Somebody help me. I said you want something that's not yours. It's not an action. It's not an outside word. It's an inside word. So what he says is, I have something very important to say about your deeds. I have something very important to say about your words. But I have something very important to say about your thoughts. Amen. And let me just say this about our thoughts and our, our inner man. The Bible saying, all that defiles, it comes from the inside. And when you look at these Ten Commandments, I wish I had somebody, all right? When you look at these Ten Commandments, it's not that God is just saying, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, and thou shalt not. Brother Josh, what God is saying is, I want to deal with the root of the problem. Say amen. I'd like to deal with the root of the problem. And the root of the problem, whether it's in your life or my life, it's not the outside. Somebody help me. The root of the problem is the inside. And God in the spirit of these commandments, Brother Trey, he deals with the inside. Did you get what I said tonight? In the first four, or the first five commandments, Miss, uh, Brother Todd's wife, Miss Suzanne, he deals with our thoughts, he deals with our words, and he deals with our deeds, all right? He reverses it on the latter half, Brother Kevin. He deals with our deeds, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, and thou shalt not steal. And then he says, I will dealt with your deeds. Now I'd like to deal with your words. Thou shalt not bear false witness. But more than anything else, I want to deal with the inner man and deal with your thoughts. Thou shalt not covet. Amen. Wow. So let me say to this church tonight that uh, no matter what form or fashion or shade, that sin becomes manifest in all. And by the way, I am not talking to lost people tonight. I'm talking to us chickens in the house, all right? I'm talking to us saved people. And no matter what form or fashion sin is manifest in all of our lives, it could be, it could be deeds, it could be words, but more than anything else, and I want everybody to understand this, more than anything else, it starts in your thoughts. It starts in your thoughts. Starts in the inner man. Yes, sir. And don't we need to get strong? Somebody help me. Yes, don't we need to get strong? Would you not, would you not, would you not, to, with me, would you not admit tonight, and this is going to get hard right here, would you not admit tonight that your biggest problem is yourself? Would you not please admit tonight that you're your own worst enemy? Did you, would you not admit with me tonight that we need to quit saying the devil made me do it and just realize the problem is... When we sin against God, when we sin against God, whether it's our deeds, whether it's our words, or whether it's in our thoughts, it all originates on the inside. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. What about pulling down strongholds and making them captive? Somebody say amen. What about gird up the loins of your mind? Gird up the loins of your mind. What about, what about, think on thee whatsoever things is pure, whatsoever things is lovely, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are holy, whatsoever things are good report. In other words, what I'm 
not trying to get this church to see tonight, although we're trying to deal with the Ten Commandments, I want to deal with the Spirit that is intertwined in those Ten Commandments, and that is this, Brother Mike Kester, that God is dealing with man's nature. God is dealing with man's inner man. And I'm telling you tonight, if you could ever and I could ever get strong enough, and that's the secret, amen, how to get strong enough, to get strong enough, where we have the mastery of the inner man, amen, where we have the mastery of the inner man, when we master the inner man, thank God the inner man can overpower the outer man, and if I'll keep the inner man right, I wish I had somebody, if I'll keep the inner man right, it's very unlikely that I'll fall in the outer man, amen, I'm simply trying to tell you, don't cut off the fruit, you gotta deal with the root, amen, you have to deal with the root, and the root is, God is saying, thou shalt not, because I want to deal not only with your words, not only with your deeds, but I want to deal with your thoughts, amen, I want to deal with your thoughts, I love this, you love this, thank God for the word of God, thank God, in commandment one through four, possibly five, you have our duty towards God. Now I'm gonna prove that to you, all right? Look at your Bible in verse number two. Now verse number one, verse one. Now watch this, this is unique. And God spake on all, I'm gonna show you something tonight. And God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Verse two, look in verse five. Thou shalt not bow down thyself nor show them, for I am, for I the I the Lord thy God am a jealous God. Look in verse 7 again. Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Look at verse number 10, everybody. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. I thought, Brother Ben, it would stop there with the first four commandments. But watch this. Look at verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. After verse 12, Brother Ivester, after verse 12, you don't find that same phraseology. But in the first five commandments, Brother Mark Edwards, the first five commandments, you have the terminology of the Lord thy God. They are found, Miss Krista, in commandment number one about thou shalt have no other gods before me. There is found in commandment number two, thou shalt not make any graven image. There are found in commandment, God knows we need to preach it, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And I'll not get sidetracked, so don't try to sidetrack me, but remember the Sabbath day, who I believe now, listen to me, has been transitioned into the Lord's day. The Sabbath is not for the New Testament age of grace. It is the Lord's day. Early upon the first day of the week when the, when the, when the ladies came to the tomb. I firmly believe tonight that in the New Testament, God said, we're going to let the Sabbath be for Israel, but the Lord's day is for God's people. So we're not, we're not going to argue all that tonight. I mean, really, that's about an hour and a half worth of teaching and preaching, and we don't have time for that tonight. But again, in context of the Sabbath day, he uses the terminology of the Lord thy God. And then even with the parents, even with the parents, he uses the terminology of the Lord thy God. Let's read that one more time. Verse number 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, look at verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Look at verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Look at verse 15, thou shalt not steal. Turn the page. Verse 16, shall not bear false witness. Verse 17, don't covet. In all of those commandments, Brother Nathan, you do not find the terminology, the Lord thy God. Although we know, Brother Rick, he is supportive and behind all of those same commandments. My point is this, my point is this. Those first five commandments, Brother Galloway, those first five commandments are our duty and our responsibility and even our relationship towards the Lord our God. Right. And Brother Brian Travis, I can prove that. I've already proved it. He uses that terminology repetitively over and over as if to say, I'm giving you these first five commandments as a reflection or as, a, as an extension 
of your relationship to the Lord thy God. These next ones, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. That's not dealing with the Lord thy God. But let me just say this. If we get the first five right, if we get the first five right, guess what? I believe those other five will take care of themselves. Because if you love the Lord your God and you do and your relationship and your duty and responsibility towards the Lord God is right, you're not going to want to violate your neighbor. Say amen. You're not going to want to do that. So then, so my, my, my whole message tonight is there's two, two, two divisions here, two, two separate divisions. The duty towards God, Brother Jonathan, and then the duty towards God our fellow mankind. Right. Now write this down if you're taking notes, all right? Write this down. Look at verse, look at verse, number, verse number three. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yep. That deals with the sovereignty of God. And again, you know, I, I got 10. I can't take it. I can't hardly take a couple minutes on each one, but I want to ask you tonight, now let's get real quiet and real still. Who is first? Good. Well, that's good. Who's first? Is it your wife? Is it your husband? Is it your job? Is it your career? Is it money? Is it money? Is it popularity? Is it fame? Is it accomplishments? Is it your pride? Or the worst of all, the worst of all, is it yourself? Is it yourself? Do you worship yourself? Do you live for yourself? Is self ruling upon the throne of your heart? And here's what the first commandment is. It's so simple. Thou shalt have no, and I'm glad God didn't put a capital G there. He put a little G. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. How large is that? It's raining. How large is that umbrella? How vast is that umbrella? Really, church, really. Who's first? Yeah. Who's first? Think about it. My point is this. I'm afraid that even in this dispensation of the grace of God, we're violating these commandments. And we're not even aware of it. And then when somebody makes us aware of it, we shrug our shoulders and say it's no big deal. I'm going to go right on like I've always gone. Listen, it's idolatry. Yes, it's sir. idolatry. You're right. God. Is he first? Is Jesus first? Is God sovereign in your life? In other words, is he control? Is he in control? Is he on the throne of your heart? Does he rule you? Are you a servant? He's the master. Are you the, are you the bond slave and he's the Lord? Do you really live for him? Do you really love him? Do you love him? Do you know what this commandment also says? It's saying that God wants a unique place in our thought life. He wants a unique place in our thought life. First, my, 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 I just wonder, man, I tell you, Help us. I mean, we go through a day. We go through a day. Is he first in our thoughts? Is he first in our attitude? Is he, do we even have him, Miss Rhonda, do we have him on our mind through the day? See what I'm saying, church? These commandments are not just for the world. And by the way, the world doesn't want them. The world's already kicked them out. Say amen. The world has already snubbed their nose up at God. But the Randy said, I don't want them. I don't want nothing to do with it. But that's not the attitude of a child of God. That's not the spirit of a child of God. In other words, we ought to put this into practice. 
Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And then over there in the New Testament, it says flee idolatry. My little children, there's another one. My little children, keep yourself from idols. You can make an idol of anything. Is pleasure your idol? Is family your idol? I wonder sometimes, let me meddle a little bit, okay? Y'all call it preaching, I'm gonna call it meddling, but either way, we like it both ways, all right? I wonder sometimes why people do come to church, Brother David. I wonder if they come just to see their, their, their kinfolk and their fraternize and fellowship and get to see each other and put on their Sunday best. I thought we're supposed to come to church because we love him, we worship him, we honor him, we want to get in the service, get involved, and let God minister to our heart. I wonder if your family quit, would you quit? God help. God help. God help. You're right. Who, who's first? And then, then I wonder if you wasn't made to be here, would you be here? And I wonder if you was underage and you're a teenager and your mom and dad say, let's go, we're going. Would you still want to come? Or, or is there something else that's your God? Something else that's your idol? Something else, you know, there's a show called American Idol. What kind of term is that? Do you see what they're saying? you see what they're promoting? Somebody say amen. Yeah. You see what they're promoting? American Idol. Yeah. Can I say this in love? America don't need any more idols. Yeah. I said America doesn't need any more idols. They're full to the brim of idols. And the sad thing is, they're going to plunge headlong into hell holding on to their idols. And I'm not talking about singers and ventriloquists. And, and I, that ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I'm talking about there's so much in this world that people are clinging to. And it is their God. It's their God. May it never be said about the members of Mountain View Baptist Church. May it never be said about the congregation of Mountain View Baptist Church that we have our little idols. Amen. I shall have no other gods before me. Let me hurry. Look at verse 2. Look at verse number 4. Verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. That deals with the standard for worship. Standard for worship. I don't see that here. We had a missionary to India, Brother Holden, in Chapel Friday. He's, he's from India, and he said in India... The prevalent religion is Hinduism, and everything is a god. Everything is a god. They make statues. They said, Brother Randy, they lock them up. They lock them up to safeguard them so nobody will steal. They have statues and representation and carvings and stone uh, replicas of everything in the world. And that's what he's talking about. Don't make any graven image of anything, of any likeness of me at all. Verse number two, verse number four. Thou shalt not make any graven image of any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is earth beneath or that is under the water of the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself in nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. That is the standard for worship. And the standard for worship is that we do not need outside mechanism to allow us to worship God. Thank God we worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. I don't need a stone. I don't need a statue. I don't need a necklace. Say amen. I don't need a set of beads. You know what I'm talking about? I don't need any of that. I don't need anything that's fabricated by man to help me worship God. I can worship God according to the dictate of my own heart, my own mind, in spirit and in truth. I do not, I do not even want any graven images in my life. Standard for worship. Look at verse number, look at verse number seven. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That deals with the sacredness of speech. Sacredness of speech. And I, I want to say this is, you're going to call this real meddling. But we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful how we throw around that holy name. That name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and everything should confess things in heaven and things. I, I am afraid. I think we, I didn't look it up, but I think we call those euphemisms. And I am afraid I've been around, now listen, it's gonna get real quiet. I am afraid I've been around too many people, too many people that are treading real close to violating that commandment. 
Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Something like, well, I don't even want to say it. I don't, I don't want to say it. But yet we hear it. You think that the only violation of that commandment is to swear using his name. By the way, that is wrong, amen. That is a violation. But to take his name in vain means empty, hollow, fleeting, shallow. To speak of God, to speak of Christ, to speak of the Lord in an empty fashion. Stay with me, okay? In a, in a disrespectful manner. In a in a in a uh, in a uh, belittle there it is a belittling fashion. Do you not think we're getting very very close to violating this commandment? How many believe tonight? How many believe when it comes to the name of the Lord our God, there should be sacredness of speech out of our life? Sacredness. Well, what do I mean? I'm talking about when you use any of those terminology. Listen, Jesus, Lord. God, Holy Spirit, right. Heavenly Father, right. God above, don't throw those terms around loosely. And I could right. use some, but I don't want to in church. I don't want to at all. But you know what I'm talking You know, don't you? Right. You know. You know what I'm talking about. Right. And when you use it lightly, here's a better word, when you use it frivolous, frivolously, Frivolously. I, I, I want to use one because I've seen this probably as prevalent as anyone. And, and God, God's listening, okay? God's listening. He's listening. And he knows my heart right now. He knows my heart. Oh, my God. That's right. Amen. Was you fixing to pray? Are you fixing to pray? Was you fixing to drop to your knee and call upon the name of God? No, no. You know what you just did? Now listen, I don't care who this is for. I don't care if it's my daughter or your daughter. It don't matter. I don't care if it's Kyle Atkins or Ben Atkins or Chris Spencer. It don't matter to me. That loose, disrespectful, gray, call it gray if you want to. It's really black. That, 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 that frivolousness, that lightness, that lightness. That frivolity. You, you, you're mentioning a holy name. You're bringing up the name that is above every name. You're talking about the name of our Heavenly Father. When you throw it around, when you throw it and you allow your children to throw it around. Let me say this. O-M-G. It's all over Facebook. Everybody's texting it. Everybody's texting it. So I ask this church tonight of good people, and I mean that sincerely. I ask this church tonight, are we taking the name of the Lord our God in vain? Do you not think God has a record? Do you not think God is listening? Do you not think maybe we need to border not, I mean, we need to, we need to err not on the side of, uh, of getting close to violating this commandment. Don't you think maybe we might ought to run the other direction? That sacredness of speech? He said, well, what are you talking about? Correct your children. Yes, sir. Hey. Correct your wife. Right. Say amen, somebody. Hey. Correct your husband if necessary. You're talking about a name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. It should not be taken in vain. Right. That's right. Good I read this. I read this years ago. For the Jeff Dover, I read that when people would write on papyrus, when people would transcribe Brother Holden and write passages of scripture, and I read this, that some of them revered Brother Ben, that name of God and Jesus so highly that when they were writing verses and, 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 and transmitting on different parchment and paper, they would take a brand new pen because they reverence that name so highly that they'd write that name with a brand new pen. And our young people today are all over social media and at the schoolhouse. Come on, 
And some of you are down there at the job. Before you can even think, and that's the problem, you're not thinking. Before you can even think, you have uttered something disrespectful to the name of the God that saved you out of hell. And look what he said. Look what he said. Let me just read it. Let me just read it. I'm only going to get the first five. Thou shalt not, verse 7, look at verse 7, take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. The word is empty. It's hollow. It's shallow. Don't use that holy name in an empty, frivolous, disrespectful, unmeaningful, unmeaningful fashion. God's listening. Yeah. Lord, if I know you had to say it like that. That's right. What would be different? What would be wrong with just saying, I don't know? Why'd you have to bring that holy name in there? But we do it, don't we? Yes, sir. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You understand what I'm preaching? Young people, young people, curb your tongue. Young people, young people, respect that name. I need to preach this tonight. Young people, young people, ask God to help you with your vocabulary. Let me just say this right here. His name is not a filler word. Truth is the truth, and you know it's the truth. We're just, we're, right. we're just, we're just, we, we, we. We're just too carnal most of the time. We're just too carnal. Christian people ought to, ought to have salty speech that, that, uh, that causes people to thirst after who we know, what we know of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should not, listen, we should not talk like the world. We should not act like the world. We should not dress like the world. We should not behave like the world. We should not love the things. Thing, same thing. Christians are supposed to be different. Christians are supposed to be different. And this commandment right here, this commandment, by the way, watch this. This is new. The first commandment deals with the unique place of God in our thoughts. The second commandment deals with the unique honor that's due his name. And the third, I love this, Brother Gary, the third commandment deals with the unique reverence. The unique reverence. The reverence. Do his, hey, hey, look at me, and I'm almost done. I have two more and I'll be done. Do you not think he deserves reverence? Yes. Does our God not deserve respect and honor? Yes, does, does our God not, not, not deserve to be honored above every person that we know of, especially in our vocabulary? Yes, our vocabulary. Yes, Let's clean it up. Amen. Let's work on it. Yes. Let's ask God to help us. Hey, why don't we ask God to convict us if we're being too frivolous with that name that is above every name? Look, if you will, in verse number, verse number eight. Verse number eight. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Again, we could argue all night. And I'm not here to argue. And I don't, I don't want to argue. I just don't. I know I've never been a Sabbath worshiper. No, right. I do know that God commemorated the first day of the week. Yes, sir. And I do know the early church gathered on the first day of the week. Right. And I do know the Lord rose on the first day of the week. Right. That's Sunday. Say amen. Yes. I do know that. And I'll tell you this. Now, I believe this. And that's another problem with America. Another problem with America is they no longer regard God's day. And I'll, I'll tell you this. And let me just say this because, again, we can stay here all night. You look in the Revelation. I was in the hell. You, I'll tell you what, class. This is class time. You finish the verse. Ready? We're in the book of Revelation. We're talking about John. Brother Derek on the Isle of Pat. Here's what John said. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Okay, so what day is that? What day is that? Sunday. It's got to be. It's got to be. And, 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 and let me just say this. And listen, it's going to hit like a ton of brick. It's still the Lord's day. Amen. I'm not trying to bring anybody into bondage. I'm not trying to put law on anybody. We are under grace. We are under grace. But the America is a whole lot better off when I honor the Lord's day. And you and your family will be a lot better off when you honor the Lord's day. The 
Lord's Day is still special to me. Yes, Lord's yes. Day, and let me just say this, and I've got to correct to you. It's not the weekend. This is not the weekend. This is not the weekend. This is the first day of the week. And thank God, Brother Robinson, we started the first day of the week where in the Father's house, opened up the Father's book, gathered with the Father's people, honoring the Father. What better way to start off your week than honoring God on the Lord's Day? So, so listen to this. This is, this is the new part I'm talking about, for me anyway. The first commandment says that God ought to be, have a unique place uh, in our thoughts. The second commandment, he ought to have unique honor to his name. The third commandment, the, the, uh, not take the name in vain, there ought to be unique reverence due to his name. But I like this one, the fourth one, Brother Mark, there ought to be a unique regard, yeah. a unique regard. Yes. For his holy day. Amen. Amen. And I'll just be honest with you. I really don't think you need to shop on the Lord's day. I'm not trying to put you under bondage. But I'll tell you. And, and, and listen. I know you're under grace. I know that. So I can't force this on you. I can't. I can't force. I cannot biblically force this on you. I cannot. But I'll tell you this. Your life will have a better quality. Your home will be more blessed. And watch me. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. You'll be able to teach your kids something special. You'll be able to teach your kids something special. That God deserves one day. There's one day that's distinct. There's one day that's different. There's one day that's sacred. There's one day that's holy. There's one day when we stop everything else and we worship God and draw out to God. Here, preach of the word of God. Please, 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 please teach your children that Sunday is the Lord's day. It don't belong to you. It don't belong to you. It don't belong to me. God help America. I don't know. God help America. God help America. When blue laws were in place, God was smiling on this country. Throw the blue laws out and things have went to pot. Say amen. Think you can like that a lot bit, but things have went to pot. They went to pot. I said, well, we don't know if we should sell liquor on Sunday or not. And how about number one, just don't sell liquor at all. It matters not if it's on Sunday or Saturday. This crowd's wrecked this world. And here's my point tonight. Here's my point. If he deserves unique honor in my thoughts, unique honor in my reverence, unique honor in my speech, don't you think he deserves By the way, is it not the best thing that ever happened to you? Listen, church, listen. Doesn't he deserve one day? Doesn't he deserve one day? He said, six days shalt thou labor, six days. So guess what? He deserves one day. We ought to give him one day. We ought to be in church on that one day. We ought to gather with the saints on that one day. We ought to be faithful to the house of God on that one day. We ought to go to Sunday school on that one day. We ought to bring our tithes and offerings on that one day. We ought to, we ought to worship in spirit and truth on that one day. We ought to enjoy that one day. We ought to cherish that one day. We ought to protect that one day. And I want to say this one more time. Somebody please teach their children and teach their grandchildren. This is Sunday. This is a different day. Amen. So why would you preach that to the church? Because this world don't care one thing about what I just said. They don't care one thing about what I just said. Brother Blackwell, they don't care. I commend you, Brother Blackwell, as far as I know. As far as I know, I commend you. As far as I know, you've had your wife and your children in this, on this Lord's Day, on the Lord's Day, at least 51, 52 weeks out of the year. Barring a vacation once in a while, nothing wrong with that. That's okay. We're good with that. God's good with that. We're good with that. But thank you. And then, then he said, why him? But I just saw his face in that pretty white shirt. So I just thanked him. But thank all of you. Thank all of you. That guess what? You're giving God a unique place. A unique place in his day. Uh, for, for, for my critics. For my critics. And, and I hope I don't have any. But for my critics. I want to say this to you, and I want to say this to my family, and everybody can take this for what it's worth. You may think it's legalism. Come on, no. You may think it's binding. No, you may think it's legalism. You may think it's binding, but I want to say this to you. Sure hasn't hurt my family. I 
feel I run. I feel I run. I'm going to run all the way to that portion. It hasn't hurt my family not one bit. Not one bit. Not one bit. Uh, we, have, we, have, we, by the help, and so have you, so have you, so have you, we have focused our lives around the most special, <laughs> the special, unique day that ever has been, and that's the Lord Day, commemorating the Lord's resurrection. And you may argue, and we could, I guess, argue about whether or not it's really the Sabbath or whether or not people are really committed to go to church all day Sunday. And we, we can talk about all that, but not tonight. I'll be tired after service tonight. So let me just say it to you like this. Right or wrong, it sure has been good to my family. Sure has been good to my family. Hadn't hurt my crowd one bit. Hadn't hurt my crowd one bit. I saw my granddaughters in the youth choir tonight. Yeah. It wasn't there on Tuesday night. It was there on Sunday. Yeah. 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 They're on Sunday. Right. Yeah. Good for you. Don't, let the, don't let the world water this down. Right. Right. Don't, don't change what you believed all your life. Yeah. Don't change what you believe all your right. life. Yeah. Don't let the society, don't let the schools of higher learning. Yeah. And I'm just going to tell you about this higher learning stuff. Oh, Higher stupidity, most of it. Higher stupidity, most of it. What do you mean? Talk, talk to some of these kids that go off for three or four years. Y'all get mad now. Talk to some of these kids when they come back after three or four years. Let's just see if they still believe there's a unique day in God's calendar. Let's see if they still think Sunday's a special day. And it is a special day. I love it. You ever, have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed that God gives you a nap on Sunday like no other day? You ever notice that? A nap for some of you so bad you didn't get it at 607. Somebody say. And Brother Mayo smiling all, all, all stoved up like a bear in hibernation, say amen. All wrapped up in them covers and them fan going. And I mean a nap like no other day. You know what I've often thought, Brother Daniel? Wonder why God makes it that way. Maybe he just puts a spirit of slumber on us. Said, son, I rested, and I want you to rest a little bit. I, mean, I love Sunday. I love Sunday. Sunday's a hell out of my life. Sunday, Sunday's the greatest day of the week. Sunday's have always been special. Sunday's a man. Listen, you'd have to drive a long way. Well, I don't, I don't want to sound prideful, but I'm sorry. You'd have to drive a little bit of miles to enjoy anything better than what we enjoyed this morning. Yeah. If you didn't know it, not the Lord was here this morning. Yeah. That's something else, boy. That's something else. Every now and then, he said, I'm going to walk down there a moment. I'm going to walk there. That don't happen at the club. That don't happen at the fall festival. That doesn't happen over there at Shoney. That doesn't happen at Burger I, I ain't never had that no Burger King. No, I ain't never had that no Burger King. I tell you, come down here to the house of God. Let them start singing. Let somebody start playing an instrument. Let somebody stand up and praise God. Let somebody get up and teach the Bible. Let somebody get up and preach the Bible. And I say, if the little wheel gets in the big wheel, I need something happy. And God ministers to my inner man. Where's that happen at? Where's that happen at? Right down here at the house of God. Right down here on the Lord's day. The Lord's day. Keep it, listen church, keep it right. Keep it sacred. Keep it holy. Keep it honorable. Keep it unique. Keep it distinct. Keep it distinct. You got six days to shop. You got six days to shop. There's nothing you don't need you can't get tomorrow evening. Amen. You got six days to recreate. You've got six days to recreate. Those fish, those deer, those possums, those raccoons, that can all wait till Monday. Amen. Amen. You got six days to visit your kinfolk. You got six days to get quiet. You got six days to visit your kinfolk. Why are you gonna take out on God on Sunday and do all that? Oh uh, no, I don't I'll tell you, I don't love my family that much. I knew that didn't go over well. I'll say it again, I don't love them that much. I'm not pulling my whole crowd out to see nobody. To see nobody. Amen. 
And I'll just be give you another little secret. I'm not going to, if I can help it, we're not going to get our crowd and our granddaughters and stuff involved on all kinds of happenings. Yeah. Happen on the Lord's Day. Yeah. We've got to leave church to go do it. Yeah. Richard won't be there this morning. Johnny's got a game. He does. Johnny's got a game. And in the annals of heaven, in the record books that God's keeping, that's going to be more important than Johnny being taught that the house of God is a special place, that the Lord's day is the Lord's day. I know what you're thinking. You say, you done going to meddling now. No, I just going to preach it. Susie's got a ballet. Well, she might have a ballet, but it shouldn't be on Sunday. Jimmy's got a birthday party. Jimmy can have a birthday party from Monday through Saturday. Yes, Jimmy don't have to have a birthday party on Sunday making yes, like this church. Yes, Amen. Yes, this is worldly, but I'll drink to that. Yes, I'm just kidding. I probably should have said that. That sounds too worldly, doesn't it? It probably does. Well, at least it's water, so amen. Yes. <laughs> Tiffany and Derek. Philip and Bethany's in church today where they went to Knoxville too. They left the church. So all that happened while Brother Range was preaching, by the way. Can I tell you the story? He's preaching up there and, and, um, and Brother Larry Wells was in the audience and he texted Doug about 12.08. Brother Doug about 12.08. And Doug had his phone because somebody was preaching for Brother Doug. So Doug didn't fool with it. It was vibrating. And then it didn't get it and then it rang again. He said, that, that's not good. And it was only like 12.08. And so finally he, he disregarded the man still preaching in Hendersonville and went off the third time and he said, I guess I better get that call. And he said, we thank you daddy may have had a stroke. He started repeating himself in the pulpit, the same line over and over. And so they actually had to stop the service and get the preacher down. And uh, I thank the Lord of what the strokes, what they're saying. Yeah, right. Right. For that. Yeah. But, but um, my point is, is Tiffany, and, and I'm talking about Bethany. Beth, that's where I came from. My four children, nine months before they got here, yeah. right. yes, good. were carried to church. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 52 Sundays out of the yeah. year. Yes. Yeah. Is it just a coincidence or is it just an accident? Or just just happened that now they're raising their family. Yep, sir. Born a vacation or out of town. They're in church 52 weeks out of the year. Listen, mom and dad, I'm done. I'm done. Train up a child. Don't just tell them. Train them. Yeah. Finish it with me. And when he is old, he will not. Listen, and, 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 and I don't worry about you either. I, I know you'll be right here. Your mom and dad brought you up the same way. So if old Pops here drops the bucket, kicks the bucket, or whatever I do, I leave this world. I expect you to have your carcass sitting right here. With my granddaughter, and if you don't, so help me God. I'm coming out of the grave on October 31st. I'm going to haunt you to the longest day you live. Keep them girls in church. And I know you will. I know you will. Same for Malia. Same for Bethany. Same for Philip and Savannah. Whenever they're going to have kids. Whatever that might be. Philip said, kids, I like deer too much. Who worries about kids? You're here tonight because you believe what I just preached. <coughs> right. Yeah. Stay that way. Yeah. Amen. The fifth one, honor thy father and thy mother. Yeah. That thy days may be long. Owen. Owen, if you want to live long, son. Yeah. If you want to have a good life. Right. You better live by that fifth commandment. Yeah. Isaiah, if you want to cut your life short, yeah. cut, you disrespect her. Yeah. And don't honor her. That's right. That's a weighty commandment, Brother Stewart, a weighty commandment. Weighty. Then he also says, the Lord thy God. So it's like a reflection, Brother Dale, of our relationship to God. That's the first five. Maybe we'll get them other five some other time. 
seemed like to me the Lord wanted to put a little exclamation point about that fourth one. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, but I, thought it, I thought it said, remember the Sabbath. Well, it did if I'm a Jew. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. I ain't there no Jew. <laughs> I said, I ain't there no Jew. Right. And you're not either. That's right. You're a Gentile saved under the grace of God. Yeah. Right. So might as well just follow the New Testament teaching. Right. Making much of the Lord's day. Yeah. I mean making much. Yeah. Making much of the Thank Lord's God. day. My, my dad and my sister were coming. Y'all don't understand me. I know you don't. My dad and my sister were coming, and my, mom, my, my wife told me they was going to get here Saturday. I said, Saturday? I said, white boy don't have time to sit around and fraternize on Saturday. White boy's going to be in the study where white boy needs to be. She said, well, they've changed their mind. I said, whoo, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> she said, really? Yeah, really. Now, although I'd love to have them to preach to them today, sure would have. That'd been great. That'd been great. If they'd have left me alone Saturday so I could study. <laughs> I told my wife, and then they thought about coming today, but now they haven't done that either. I told my wife, I said, they have no responsibilities. Right. Sunday's not special. Right. That's good. So they're going to travel all day Sunday. But they end up not doing that either, which is fine. So I don't know when they're doing it, what they're doing when they're coming, or if they're coming. My point is this. If you make much of the Lord's day, it's not a day like every day. No, no, sir. no, no, no sir. And I'll be honest, some of you need to shore up a little bit right there. Hey, hey, that's, hey, that's good. Good preaching. Yeah. And, and, and let me just say this in closing. Whatever got wrong with being faithful to your church. Hey, 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 that's good. Hey, that's good. Whatever got wrong with that. Yeah. Hey. Commitment to your church. Let's stand, all right? Let's stand all over the building. Let's, uh, do we know the chorus, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul? Let's just sing that. Let's sing that, Lord, please. John, you come to play the organ? <laughs> John's going to smoke. He ain't playing the organ. <laughs> just kidding, John. Just kidding. Just kidding. Let's sing that chorus a time or two. We'll go home. Let's sing it. Sing it, sing it. safe tonight. I'm confident it's probably still raining out there. Be safe. A little dark out there. Watch the children. Appreciate all of you being here today. And let's look forward to the Sunday, Wednesday service and the blood drive. If you'd like to participate in that blood drive, give some blood to the American Red Cross. All right, that's Wednesday, all right? Brother Daniel, pray with us. <clears throat> Lord, thank you, dear God, for this day. And thank you, dear God, for the messages, Lord, that we've heard from your word. Thank you, dear God, for the pastor, Lord, and for preaching to us tonight, for teaching us your ways, mm. dear God, and for rightly dividing your word. We bless your name for that. Thank you, dear God, for your many blessings. Pray, dear God, that you would just uh, keep us all safe as we travel home tonight. Mm -hmm. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen.